Hello, I'm Curtis Crane of the Crane Center for Transgender Surgery, and I'm both a board-certified plastic surgeon and a fellowship-trained reconstructive urologist. Today, I'm going to be speaking to you about chest masculizing surgery. Chest masculizing surgery comes in two flavors. There's the double incision, which is probably 98 or 99% of our patients, and that's for uh, anyone with um, a larger amount of redundant skin. Uh, versus the keyhole is the other type of surgery we can do. That's when there's a very small amount of extra skin. If most of my patients aren't really familiar with cup size, but if you are, it'd be like an A or a small B cup. There's really no skin folding over itself. And in those situations, you can make a very small incision. You don't have to remove extra skin. You're just removing the gland. So you make a smaller incision right under the nipple areola complex, remove the entire gland, place drains, I always place drains for the keyhole, uh, and then um, instead of having a, large, a larger scar across both halves of the chest, uh, there's just the small scar in the nipple areola complex. Now, often patients come to me saying, yeah, I definitely want the keyhole, and then I look at their chest or they send me pictures of their chest, and there's just too much extra skin. If you perform a keyhole and you don't remove the extra skin that you do with the double incision, then it will leave a floppy bag of skin that just hangs down and it's really unsightly. It's, it's actually very hard to correct. I've never had this happen, but I've had a few patients come to me from other surgeons where a keyhole was performed, but a double incision should have been. And it's a hard problem to correct. So you want to do the right surgery the first time. Uh, so with that, I'll start with double incision since that's the majority of our patients. Uh, double incision is the, the, the name comes from, I believe the two incisions, elliptical incisions that are created around a patient's chest on each half to remove the extra skin, the nipple area, Ola complex is removed with that skin, we thin it, and then we sew it back on the body after removing some skin where we want it to go. And so we can put the nipple areola complex wherever we want. And this is another reason why some patients go for a double incision instead of a keyhole. Some patients with a very small chest come in and they are, from a skin perspective, they are good candidates for a keyhole because there's not much extra skin. However, the nipple areola complex is really low on the chest or really medial. That's a typical feminized position. You can't move the nipple areola complex with the keyhole compared to the double incision where I just described, we can actually put it anywhere on the chest. So typically when you perform a keyhole, the nipple areola complex will actually drop a little bit compared to what it is now. So nipple position is extremely important. When you look at someone with their shirt off, the first thing the eye goes to is the nipple areola complex. And if it's in a, in a feminized position, the chest doesn't really look as good. So I've had some patients that have very low or very medial nipple areola complexes. And together we've made the decision to do a double incision if they're going to be smaller scars because there's not much extra skin, but that allows us the freedom to sew that nipple areola complex wherever we want in a higher, more lateral, masculinized position so that when those scars fade, the chest looks better. So uh, getting back to double incision, um, the ellipses of extra skin are removed, the nipple areola complex is thinned. We do a really good job contouring the chest so that there isn't a scooped out appearance. You have to leave some amount of fat and even a small amount of breast tissue. And every male has some amount of breast tissue. So you don't want to perform what would be called a radical mastectomy where you remove 100% of breast tissue. It's, uh, it, it wouldn't give a very good appearance. We want a smooth contrast um, from your operated area to the rest of your skin where no fat has been removed. So that's always our goal and, and 
gotten very good at it at this point. Um, I've done several hundred chest surgeries, possibly more than 500. And, um, and we get excellent results because of the, I think the artistry that you learn through this is probably one of the most critical components. We take every surgery very seriously, but of all the surgeries we do, uh, this is sort of one of the lower technically complicated surgeries uh, compared to free flap phalloplasty where we're operating under a microscope and sewing together tiny nerves, arteries, and veins. So getting back to the procedure, um, patients, we, we perform the procedure, it usually takes me about an hour and a half. I don't use drains on the double incision. I'm one of the few surgeons in the country that doesn't use drains. I haven't done that in probably six or seven years. And typically my patients only take pain meds for about 24 hours. Uh, and then after that, they're just not having any pain. We usually do the surgeries on a Friday. We'll see you back on a Tuesday. You'll wear a binder day and night, 24 seven, from the, the time of you wake up until we see you back in clinic, then we remove the binder. We take off two bolster dressings that are sewn over the nipple areola complex. And then with the double incision, you never have to wear the binder again. With the keyhole, you should probably wear it for another week to two weeks. Uh, also, if you have the keyhole, as I mentioned, you'll have drains in. Those will get removed at that first post-operative appointment in most cases. No drains with the double incision. The double incision actually has a quicker recovery to the keyhole. A lot of patients assume since the incision is smaller in the keyhole that you'll recover faster. It's actually the opposite because so much of the surgery is being done underneath the skin. There's more of a potential for seroma or fluid building up under there. And uh, the skin sort of has to redrape in a different way. That's why we have patients wear a binder. So uh, most patients having the double incision, they could go back to their desk job after a week. If you have a, uh, a job where you have to do a lot of manual labor, then it's better to wait three or four weeks. You can go back on light duty at three weeks, four weeks for, for really heavy lifting. Same with working out. Uh, for the keyhole, I would say if you have to get back to work, uh, a week is okay, but probably 10 days to two weeks would be better. So it's a little bit longer recovery. The risks of both procedures are very similar. The risks include infection, bleeding, wound healing complications, changes in sensation, minor asymmetries from one side to another. Uh, all those risks are less than one or 2%. I don't believe I've ever had to admit anyone for IV antibiotics. At worst, we say, well, that looks a little red. We'll give you some oral antibiotics. I've never had to transfuse anyone blood and uh, as of 2020, uh, I have had one take back to the operating room for bleeding out of, like I said, several hundred patients. So the, the risk of that is less than 1%. There is a risk of damage to the nipple areola complex, meaning it, it doesn't heal as quick as the rest uh, of the rest of the chest. Uh, for, and that's for the keyhole or the double incision. The blood supply is definitely damaged as we remove the nipple areola complex and then thin it and then put it back on the chest. It's kind of remarkable that it even takes uh, the fact that you're completely removing part of your body and then sewing it somewhere else. But with uh, plastic surgery techniques, we're actually really good at getting this done. I would say in one or two percent of patients, I've seen partial loss of a nipple areola complex, meaning uh, some of the some of the skin sloughs off, and then we just have patients put bacitracin on it, and it eventually heals in. At this point in 2020, I have never had to take anyone back to the operating room because of loss of a nipple areola complex. It's usually a small amount; and it just heals in on their own, on its own. Um, and I don't believe I've ever had anyone lose the entire nipple area of the complex. It's usually a small fraction of it. And uh, like I said, it just heals in on its own if we wait. Uh, the last thing I wanted to touch on was that um, we, as I mentioned, we're not removing 100% 
of the breast tissue. We're removing a lot of it, in some cases 95% of it, but it's not impossible to get breast cancer. If you leave just one breast cell, it's possible it, a patient could get breast cancer. Now the risks of breast cancer are greatly reduced because we're removing 95% of the breast cells, but it's not absolutely zero. So there, you certainly won't have enough tissue on your chest to perform a mammogram, uh, but just monthly exams, just feeling the chest, uh, if so, it should be performed. If someone feels a lump, then they should, uh, they should go out and seek a doctor that specializes in breast lumps to, to see what needs to be done. Uh, I kind of filled in keyhole as I went, um, but if you have any questions about double incision or keyhole, just be sure to uh, ask me in your pre-operative appointment. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you.